Mid-level spells are where spellcasters really begin to make an impact on the world. Now, sorcerers have a very limited amount of spells that they can learn for each spell level, so they have to be very picky as to which spells they take. This problem is amplified tremendously for the Divine Soul Sorcerer, who has access to more mid-level spells than any other spell casting class by a mile. Now, the Divine Soul Sorcerer, even though they have access to so many available spells they can learn from, they have a very small amount of spells that they actually can learn at each level. So it's kind of a catch-22, and we are here to help you make those choices a little bit easier. Welcome to the Twisted Tentacle Inn. I'm your innkeeper, and today we'll be talking about mid-level Divine Soul Sorcerer spells. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I also have a Patreon and I'll link it in the video description if you want to support the channel in that way. Other than Banishment and True Seeing, there are no cleric spells of level four, five, and six that overlap with the Sorcerer's spell list. This means that at these spell levels, you have an overwhelming amount of options and not that many slots to fill those options with. So. Let's go ahead and get started right away. We'll go over some of these more important spells. I'm only going to list the spells I don't recommend at the very end of the video. I'm only going to talk about spells that you might be thinking about taking and I don't recommend very, very specifically or spells that I highly recommend. At the end of the video, I'll just list the spells that I'm pretty sure you're not even thinking about taking and I also don't recommend that you take. Now, if you've been watching my Divine Soul Sorcerer videos, then you know that I recommend that you specialize in a particular type of spell casting. If you broaden out your scope too far, you risk being ineffective at most of the things that you're trying to broaden out to. So if you specialize, that is where the, you will really make an impact. So if you're gonna be specializing in buffing, sure, take a few healing spells or a few damaging spells, but take most of your spells as buffing spells so that you're able to make the biggest impact in your in your particular specialization. So with that said, I'm gonna categorize these spells like I did in the first video into different spell types and we'll go from there. Starting with buff spells, we have Holy Weapon, which is a fifth level spell. This one adds 2d8 damage to an attack and has a burst of damage when the spell ends. This is not great for a fifth level spell that uses your concentration, to be honest. Although Radiant is the best damage type in the game, so that is a plus. Radiant usually stops creature from, from regenerating, and at these levels you're gonna start facing creatures that regenerate, so that is also another plus, especially as you get to higher and higher levels. You can extend the spell and make it last two hours, and it may help that if you use distance spell to cast it on a melee combatant while keeping a distance from them in the middle of a fight. But overall, I don't think that this spell is worth using your concentration on. Next we have Hero's Feast, which is a six level spell. This one is a fantastic spell that can greatly change the outcome of an entire adventure. This is a spell I always try to take whenever I can, and it lasts 24 hours. So you can long rest and cast it before you long rest, and you still benefit from it while having your six level spell slot available afterwards. The gold cost is kind of high, but by the time you cast it, in most campaigns, usually gold is not a problem by the time you can cast this type, this level spell. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. As far as meta magic, there's not many meta magic options that work here. So save yourself some sorcery points and use them on something else. Next up is True Seeing. It's a six level spell, and this is a good spell. It, it helps you deal with many powerful defenses that high powered creatures have. Devil Sight, Invisibility, and other features that make it hard for you to target them. It also helps with finding items or traps that are invisible and things that are in the ethereal plane. The thing with this spell is that it's situational, and that's not what you want from a sorcerer spell. As you get to higher levels, it becomes more valuable because it becomes less situational as you face more and more creatures that have these capabilities. Twin Spell works pretty well on this one, but it's really, really costly at six sorcery points. Extended spell makes this one last two hours, which, you know, can be pretty good if you're dungeon crawling or something. And distance spell may actually come in handy if the group is separated in a fight against invisible creatures. The next category we're going to talk about today is control. And the first spell will be dispel evil and good. It's a fifth level spell. This is a multi-use spell that's mostly a defensive spell. The bad thing about this spell is that the defensive portion only works on yourself, so you really can't twin it. 
The good thing about this spell is that it is versatile. You don't really need to have lesser restoration or dispel magic to undo fear, charm, or possession. You can use that aspect of this spell on others. Plus, there's an element of control where you can actually banish an undead elemental fey or celestial back to their plane and that's why i've put this spell under the control category i've also put it under the defense category but we'll get to that in a moment now just on the versatility of this spell alone i think it's a fantastic spell for sorcerers you can't use heightened spell on the banishment aspect of the spell unfortunately but it would have been great if you could you also can't twin the spell or use distance spell on this one which would have been really neat but I still think it's a great choice because of the versatility and the situations where you're going to be using it start to become far more common at these levels. Next up is Guardian of Faith, which is a fourth level spell. This one is a way to keep enemies away from you or they risk taking a pretty good amount of damage. The thing with this spell is that you have a much better option with Spirit Guardians. The spell doesn't move with you and Spirit Guardians does. The spell only deals damage three times and then it ends. Sure, it's for a lot of damage. The total by the time it deals all its damage is going to be 120 points uh, at its maximum. Spirit Guardians hits every enemy that comes close to you, so it can potentially deal a lot more damage than this spell can. Spirit Guardian also creates difficult terrain, which helps defenses a lot more because it's got that sort of control element. But all that said... I have stated before and I stand by the fact that I don't think Spirit Guardians even is a good spell for sorcerers because generally you're not going to be attacked in melee that often so you're not going to benefit from a spell like Spirit Guardians as much as a cleric with full armor well who's going to be in the front lines and whatnot. This spell does have a few things going for it. First, it lasts eight hours. You can extend it with the extended spell to 16 hours. That's really good. Also, it doesn't require concentration and it can serve a purpose of guarding your party during a long rest, in addition to helping you in a, in a battle and protecting you from melee combatants. But even with all these benefits, I still don't think this one is good enough for a sorcerer to take. So I'd say that you can skip this one. Next up is Insect Plague. This one is a fifth level spell. Uh, this one is a decent control and a damage over time spell. It creates difficult terrain and light obscurement, and it deals decent damage over time. I like that the damage is dealt when the cloud appears and not, you know, when the creature takes their turn. This makes it more likely to kill things that are inside on your turn so that your allies that go after you don't have to waste actions attacking these creatures that are going to die anyways. It deals damage again at the end of their turn if they stay within the radius. So you really have the potential to deal 8d10 damage in one round to each creature that's caught inside if you position this properly. That's a really good amount of damage. Not a lot of meta magic works with this one here, but you don't really need it to. Uh, extended spell can make it last 20 minutes. I guess that's good if you're in the exploration stage and you don't want creatures catching up to you or something, but that's a very niche use. Still, in combat, I think this spell can be pretty solid. Again, these damage over time spells are best when they deal damage the moment you cast it because you're going to ensure that you at least get some benefit from it and then they deal damage at the end of the enemy's turn. So on the same round of combat, you're dealing damage twice, potentially. Also, you protect yourself from, say, losing concentration. So say you cast a spell and something else hits you, and if it didn't deal damage when you first cast it, well, you just wasted a spell slot, right? So the fact that it deals damage on the, on the, turn, on the moment that you cast it I think is a very beneficial aspect of this spell. So if you want a good damage over time spell, definitely go ahead and pick this one. And of course, it's got the control element. The difficult terrain makes it more likely that creatures will remain in the area of effect on their turn, at the end of their turn, so they can take damage again. And that is if you find a way to slow them down even further, push them back into it, whatnot, they're going to already be moving at half their speed while they're inside, so they're less likely to be able to get out at the end of their turn. This That makes this spell a great control spell and damage over time spell. Next up is Planar Binding. I think this is one of those spells that's really good for a cleric. With limited known spells, I think that this spell is really hard to justify for a sorcerer. It's great to be able to extend a summoned creature for 24 hours or more, but this is not the type of spell that you're casting every day. And for a sorcerer, that's really hard to make work. You need spells that you can cast all the time. Versatile spells like Dispel Evil and Good and that kind of thing. This spell does not make the cut on my list. Next up is Blade Barrier. 
This is a good wall effect that deals decent damage. Sorcerers don't really have access to many wall spells, so this is a good one to pick if you were looking for something in that department. There's not that many meta magics that you can use on this, but it's still a decent spell. So remember, wall spells and summoning spells are the two spell types that wizards have access to that sorcerers generally do not. In fact, they have so few of both of those type of spells that they basically don't have any. Because I think their only summoning spell that came out just recently with Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons is a fifth level spell or something like that. So having access to summoning and wall spells by expanding to this cleric spell list is something that you may want to consider when uh, picking your spells because both wall spells and summoning spells are both very good. Wall spells being great options for control, and blade barrier is control, it keeps creatures away, or otherwise they risk taking a ton of damage. So, very, very good overall. Next up is Forbiddance. This is a six level spell, another really cool spell that is awesome for clerics. It serves as a very good way to ensure that a long rest is possible in an area that's full of fey, undead, celestials, or fiends because they're not gonna be able to enter the area. So you can safely rest even if you're surrounded by these type of creatures. It also serves as a way to lay a trap for those types of creatures and also prevent pesky teleporters, specifically fey tend to teleport a lot. You prevent them from teleporting. Um, unfortunately, it's another one of those spells that's just too situational to justify taking as a sorcerer. Leave it for the cleric, skip it for yourself. The next category of spells we're going to talk about is Blasting Spells, starting with Dawn, a 5th level spell. This one is very similar to Insect Plague, except that it doesn't create obscurement or difficult terrain. But if you're looking for a damage over round uh, spell, this is a much better spell in that aspect. Even though the duration of Insect Plague is a little bit better, uh, this one is going to deal a lot more damage. Uh, first, it deals much better damage type with Radiant, the best damage type in the game in my opinion. Chances are that creatures are probably going to be resistant to piercing damage that's dealt by Insect Plague. With Dawn, you're dealing a damage type that is rarely resisted and in fact can usually deal additional damage in the form of preventing regeneration. A lot of enemies that are hit by Radiant damage cannot regenerate on the round they took any radiant damage. So that's gonna be extra damage effectively that you've dealt that turn. So just on that aspect, this is a much better damaging spell. Like Insect Plague, this one can potentially deal 8d10 damage in a single round because it can deal damage on the round that you, on the turn that you cast it as well as at the end of the enemy's turn if they remain in the area. This one does not have that control element that Insect Plague has. So if you want a spell that's a little more versatile where you can use a little bit of control as well as damage over time, then go ahead and go for Insect Plague. But if you already have a control option and you wanted something that just deals a little bit more reliable damage, then go ahead and pick this spell. I think most of the time I will be picking this spell. As a sorcerer, you have a ton of control options already. So there are ways to uh, slow enemies down without needing to take Insect Plague. And instead, take this spell that's going to do a lot more damage and more reliable damage. Next up, we have Flame Strike. This is a fifth level spell, and it is a very subpar blast spell. It deals the exact damage amount as a Fireball, which is a third level spell, and this is a fifth level spell. Yeah, it deals some radiant damage, so in a way it's a little bit better than Fireball in that sense. Um, it also can hit creatures that are flying a little easier than Fireball because it's a cylinder as opposed to having to strike a point within range. But it's still not enough to justify this. It, you're a sorcerer and you have access to the best area of effect blast spells in the game. Don't settle for a subpar spell that has terrible range and a much smaller area of effect just because you have access to it. Um, you can empower or use distance spell on this one to make the range better, but but why? <laughs> Instead, take your fifth level spell slot from this and upcast a fireball for 10d6 damage, which is going to be a lot more. We mentioned this other spell before, but the next spell is Insect Plague. This is also a blast spell because it deals damage over time. We talked about this spell in the control section. If you're going to take this spell just for the damage aspect, instead go ahead and take Dawn. It's a better spell overall if you're specifically looking for some kind of damage over time spell. Next up is Harm. It's a six level spell that's solid single target damage. It also prevents regeneration, kind of, sort of. If you want a bit of blasting as a divine soul, this is a good choice. The range is not great, 
but you can use distance spell on this to help boost the range. You can also use heightened spell to ensure that you know the creature fails their saving throw. It's really too bad that it's constitution, but with heightened spell, you can kind of make this work. I like that this one can stop regeneration as well in a s sort of weird way. It reduces the maximum hit points of the target, so they won't be able to regain those hit points. And the more times that you hit them with this, they'll never, even, after, even on rounds when they're not taking any radiant or fire damage or whatever prevents their regeneration, because their ma maximum hit points have been reduced, they can't regenerate that anyways. Now, the only drawback of this spell is that even though it's a good damage type with necrotic, the decrease in maximum hit points is considered disease. So something to keep in mind because there's a lot of creatures at this level that are immune to disease as a condition, which means that the decrease in their maximum hit points is not gonna work on them. So if they have a regeneration ability and they're immune to disease, they're still gonna be able to regenerate. Next, we're gonna talk about debuff spells. The first spell we're going to talk about is Contagion. It's a fifth level spell. I've heard many people tout this spell as a great spell. I also think it's a great spell. Some of the effects are really good, but the one I recommend most is Slimy Doom. This effect is going to grant disadvantage on constitution saves and checks, which makes it much more likely that they'll fail their saving throws in future rounds for this same spell. Regardless, if you land the initial hit, the creature is going to be effective for a minimum of three rounds. Keep that in mind. Even though they get three saves uh, to remove the effects, if they succeed one time, they are still going to be affected for the next two rounds. They need to succeed on three saves, so they'll be affected for a minimum of three rounds. That is pretty, pretty awesome, especially since most battles last three to four rounds. So this will last the entire combat. So what does Slimy Doom do? It has the creature get stunned, get the stun condition after taking damage. That is extremely debilitating and can devastate a creature. The other effects are pretty good and can come in handy if you're teaming up with another caster and you want to soften the enemy up for their spells. And granting disadvantage on a specific saving throw every round, you can really plan for some nasty things against that creature. The hard part is landing that initial hit. It's a range of touch which sucks. It's very, very hard to get that as a sorcerer. As a cleric, you're generally armored, so you're going to be able to get close to a creature to touch them. But as a sorcerer, you do not want to be near a creature, especially one that you're willing to, to use this spell on. That means they are a very nasty creature, right? So why would you want to get up close to them? Well, at least you have distance spells, so you can at least open up the range a little bit to 30 feet. Still not a great range, but much better than having to be right up close to them to touch them. This is going to be probably the best option for this spell, is using Distance Spell. You can't really use Heightened Spell on this, because the saving throw doesn't happen when you first cast a spell. But honestly, it's fine. They have to succeed on three saves before the effect goes away. So as long as you land that initial hit, they're pretty much done. Um, there's just one thing I don't like about this spell, and it's that it's a disease. A lot of high level creatures are immune to disease, so they're gonna be immune to this spell, and that's something to consider. The next category we're gonna be talking about is defensive spells. And first we'll start with Dispel Evil and Good. We kind of already talked about this spell. Um, if you just want the defensive bonus of this spell, just take Protection from Evil and Good, which is a much lower level spell. But if you want a versatile spell that can help your party and also have a similar effect, and you have a lot of allies that hate the fear and charm effects, a lot of barbarians and fighters hate fear and charm because it completely disables their character, then this is a great choice. Next up is Death Ward. That's a fourth level spell, and it's a great spell that can be used with Extended Spell for some awesome results. With a duration of eight hours, Extended Spell increases that to 16 hours. Now this is really important because you can cast this spell before a long rest, Extend it with your meta magic, with the extended spell meta magic, and get all of your sorcery points and spell slots back when you finish that short rest. But you'll still be warded from death for an additional eight hours because you've extended the duration to 16, you've taken a rest that takes eight, you still have eight hours left of the duration of this spell with no concentration requirement, which means you are safe from being killed here. If you're reduced to below one hit point, you'll be reduced to one instead, and that's pretty awesome. That can save your heroes life um, many many times over plus you can cast this on others so if you have enough spell slots go ahead and death ward as many people in your party 
and uh, you'll still have all your spell slots and sorcery points when you finish your long rest. So if you know you're going into some really crazy dungeon, prepare by using this and you'll have a party of people that are going to be much more likely to survive the experience. The next spell that we're going to talk about is Freedom of Movement. It's a fourth level spell and it's another great spell and a great target for extended spell. If you extend it, it'll have a two hour duration and can protect you or a party member from devastating effects like being restrained, difficult terrain, or even paralysis. This is a spell that you'll probably use every single session and it's going to be more useful as you go up in levels. Uh, this is one spell that if I ever have access to it, I almost always take. You can't go wrong casting freedom of movement on your main damage dealer or on your controller caster because now they're going to be able to avoid re being restrained, being slowed down, or being paralyzed. I mean, it's such an awesome protection to have going into a dungeon that you're going to have the confidence to face pretty much anything. The next category I want to talk about are healing spells. We'll start with Greater Restoration, a fifth level spell. At the mid to high levels, you begin to encounter exponentially more and more creatures that deal devastating and debilitating effects to your party. There are creatures that deal a lot of damage as you get to higher levels, but the tougher part of battling these creatures are the secondary effects that just give your party debuffs or take them out of the combat entirely. Having this spell is almost always useful and makes a much bigger impact than you'd first appreciate. Yes, it costs 100 gold pieces to cast, but it's almost always worth it. You can get twice your money's worth by using Twin Spell, and even though it's a massive five sorcery points to use Twin Spell on this, it just might be worth it, and it'll save you that extra 100 gold pieces. The next spell I want to talk about is Mass Cure Wounds. It's a fifth level spell. It's, this one is a really good target for your empowered healing ability. Very few spells are good targets for that ability, unfortunately. It's a cool ability in theory, but there just aren't enough spells that benefit from it. But this is one that is really good and will definitely benefit from that ability. It can heal up to six creatures with one action. That's really, really good. I wish that it let you distribute the dice around as you please instead of you know evenly doing the same amount of healing to everybody because generally you have party members that are going to take a lot of damage and party members that stand in the back and take very little damage but even without that benefit this spell is still a great spell and i'd highly recommend it the next spell i want to talk about is raise dead it's a fifth level spell i don't like this spell both as a player and as a dungeon master in my tables we really don't use it because it trivializes character death Instead, if someone loses a character they really like, we kind of make like a full quest to find a lost and ancient artifact that's going to revive the character or something to that effect. Um, the quest usually has the potential for a major cost as well when we do something like that, if we even decide that that's a possibility. So sometimes going on these quests will cause like a long-term madness, a curse, major injury, or something similar, so that the players know that if they lose a character, and they want it back, if we even give them the option to get their character back, that there is a significant cost involved for their character or the other party members that are going to undertake this quest in order to help them come back to life. Being able to just, boop, oh, I paid 500 gold pieces, and you're back. You're back to life with no ill effects. I mean, I, I think that's just... It it's, makes the impact of character death so cheap, and uh, I don't know, I'm obviously venting here uh, regarding spells like this. I personally don't like them. I know there's a lot of tables that love these types of spells and they'll take them. And by all means, I'm not judging you for doing that. It's not for my table. We don't play it at my table, but I am not judging you for playing with it if you do. Now, all that said, this one is a major, major buff to a party that does use these types of spells. Suddenly you're gonna be taking risks and fighting things that you normally wouldn't even dare to fight. It's a very good spell, and in my opinion, it's a broken spell. 500 gold pieces to cast it is very cheap at the level that you get this spell. In most campaigns, to get a character back for 500 gold pieces, especially at, as you get to higher levels, that's nothing. You have 500 gold pieces, you know, as pocket change, basically, in most campaigns. Now, despite everything that I'm saying here, as a sorcerer, even if your table plays with these types of spells, I don't recommend you take it. Leave it for the clerics. At this point in the game, you're learning very few spells and characters do not die every single session. 
it may be one time in an entire campaign where a character dies. It may, if you have a really tough or gritty campaign, maybe you have characters die every few sessions, but very, very rarely do people play D&D campaigns where every single session you lose a character. So as a sorcerer who has very limited number of spells that they can learn, are you gonna take a spell that you're only gonna use once every 10 sessions? every 15 sessions or maybe not at all in the entire campaign and it's just going to be sitting there in your limited spell list of at this point i think you have like 11 spells known is it worth it i don't i don't think so i don't think so as good and broken as this is again leave it for someone else who gets a lot more known spells for you i would say skip it next up on the list is heal it's a six level spell this one gives you 70 points of ranged healing to one creature at a range of 60 feet. That is already awesome. Six sorcery points to twin it is expensive, but for this one, I think it's completely worth it. And usually your front lines are the ones that are gonna require most of the healing. So if you have more than one frontliner, there are gonna be fights at this level where both of them are gonna be very badly injured and using six sorcery points to grant each one of them 70 points of ranged healing. And you can even use distance spell to make it, you know, even further range. That is pretty awesome. Six sorcery points, just to kind of look at the cost analysis of this. This is a six level spell. Six sorcery points will get you, I believe, a fourth level spell slot by converting. So that is a very, very good bargain, being able to twin the spell in order to grant he that much healing to two characters. Heck, if you have two characters that go down in a fight, boom, you can bring them back up and not just back up, but back up with a significant amount of hit points, each one. That's 140 health that you've healed in one action to two characters. That's pretty amazing. So if you're able to take this spell, by all means, take it. Next up, we're just gonna mention it because it does belong in this, in this category, is Dispel Evil and Good, which is a fifth level spell. We've already talked about it in other sections. I'm gonna reiterate that the versatility of this spell is definitely a strong suit. The effects can be duplicated with lower level spells, yes, but you need three separate lower level spells to duplicate the effects that this thing has the ability to, to use so take one six level spell slot or one six level spell that can do the effects of three lower level spells i think it's still worth it and of course the healing element of this spell is the removing of the fear and charm effects and it can be very useful for your front lines again i've mentioned it earlier in this video a lot of barbarians and fighters really hate fear and charm effects it really takes their their characters out of combat sometimes so it's really nice to be able to get rid of that and keep them in the fight the next category i want to talk about is mobility the only spell available in the cleric spell list that offers mobility is word of recall which is a six level spell this spell is more of a panic button more so than a true teleport spell you can't count on this spell for getting around in combat or to help with exploration but if your party finds themselves in trouble you have this spell to help you get away it's very situational, and I think it's actually a really good spell for clerics. Again, another one of those. For a sorcerer, it's just way too situational to actually be useful. Remember always, you have very few known spells. You just can't afford to take one of those precious spell slots with a spell that's this situational, unfortunately. Plus, you have better teleportation options in the sorcerer spell list, so go for one of those. The next category I want to talk about is summoning spells. Summoning spells like wall spells are not common in the sorcerer list. It's really too bad because summons are just so, so good. As for Divine Soul, they're even more useful. Not only does extended spell work well for them in general, but if you're gonna specialize in healing, you can cast Sanctuary and then let your summons and animated corpses do all of the fighting while you heal and buff your allies. It's a great strategy that's sometimes lost when you play a cleric because usually as a cleric, you're armored and you can help in combat and you have other spells like, you know, spiritual weapon or uh, spirit guardians that you're gonna be using. But those two spells, I don't recommend for a sorcerer. So spirit guardians and spiritual weapons, um, leave that for the clerics and then you can just cast sanctuary on yourself and keep buffing your allies and healing your allies so in a way you'll be a better healer than the cleric who's going to be busy doing damage in combat anyways the first spell that i do want to talk about today is planar ally this is a six level spell this is a very very dm dependent spell 
It has the potential to be very good, but it's definitely not a spell that you're going to cast every day. And we've talked about spells that are this circumstantial. As good as they might be, they're just generally not a good fit for sorcerers. Leave it for the clerics. The next spell I want to talk about is Planar Binding. It's a fifth level spell. This spell can be combined with a summoning spell to take better control of a summoned creature. It works well when combined with a spell like Planar Ally, let's say. Now, it doesn't have to be a summoned creature, but with a one hour casting time, it's more than likely going to be a summon So to be able to make good use of this. If you're fighting a creature or a creature somewhat hostile to you, they're not gonna sit there and let you cast a spell for an hour before doing anything to you. So generally, this is probably gonna be meant to be used for summons. Now, this spell can be good in the right circumstance, but it is exactly just that, circumstantial. So skip it. Next up is Summon Celestial. It's a fifth level spell. Sorcerers generally don't get a whole lot of summoning spells. We've talked about this. So generally I take note when a summoning spell becomes available for sorcerer character. This spell was released in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and of the summoning spells listed today, it's possibly the best one. It's a good summon spell. It can help with exploration, combat, and utility. A summon with opposable thumbs like this one can de deliver potions, pick up items for you, set off traps, open doors, take hits from enemies, they can grapple enemies, they can use the help action, they can increase your damage output as well. They can also um, scout ahead and because they can open doors that uh, really makes them very useful for exploration as well. And then this one flies on top of that. So it can even get to places that you may not normally be able to reach unless you have you know something that allows you to fly. This one also has a healing element that can come in handy in a pinch and it also gets a few attacks each turn and a good amount of hit points, making it very relevant in combat. The damage that it does, it's not super, you know, awesome, but it is relevant damage. It's good damage. So this is a spell that I highly recommend that you take. Now, once you get Conjure Celestial, which is a seventh level spell, I believe, I suggest making that one your priority instead of upcasting the spell because that spell is just better than this one by leaps and bounds. But for now, this spell will do, and it's gonna do quite a bit of work for you, so I highly recommend that you take this spell. Extended spell works great here, especially if you're dungeon delving, because your summon is gonna remain in play even after a short rest, and at least it'll continue to help your party through this dungeon exploration after a short rest. So that's pretty important and pretty helpful using extended spell here. Most other meta magic options won't do much here, so you know, just keep extended spell in mind for this one. But I highly recommend this spell, take it if you can. The next spell I want to talk about is Create Undead. It's a six level spell. It's an upgrade to Animate Dead in a way. The only drawback is that you have to cast this one at night or it's not gonna work. Really weird, <laughs> it's thematic I guess, but just a really strange limitation. Um, it's not really very limiting, but you know, it can come up, so be aware that it's there. Um, this one does stack with Animate Dead and you can have three ghouls from this spell and then two zombies from Animate Dead under your control. And that's not bad at all. And these creatures are super helpful for the same reasons that I mentioned earlier with Summon Celestial. Plus, they're a lot more uh, expendable, so if you want to send them off to set off a trap, go ahead. Let them go get killed, <laughs> and uh, it's not a huge loss for you, you know? Whereas the Celestial, if you use a, that Celestial to set off traps, you lost a very good ally uh, that you could have been using for other things as well. These things are definitely more useful for that kind of thing. They also work great as little meat shields you can surround yourself with them and they can take the hits even though they don't take that much damage before going down uh at least they can uh, absorb quite a few attacks from you as a caster so that's really good and then of course the additional benefit of this spell is that it doesn't require concentration so you can still have a summoned creature like the ally the celestial ally and then you can also have these guys on board at the same time and on top of all of that, they have a really awesome ability with the Paralyze effect. Now, the DC of this Paralyzation effect is really, really low, and their bonus to hit is also not very good. So, do not expect this to land very often. Oh yeah, and it's a constitution save, which at this level, a lot of creatures are gonna be good at, so you're definitely not gonna be landing this very often. But when you do, it is going to be a game changer. The one creature you paralyze with the, one of these ghouls 
is pretty much dead at that point because every attack is going to be a critical hit. You have advantage to hit that creature. They're dead. They're going to be dead. Even if it's a boss creature, I mean, it's just going to destroy them. Um, but again, do not count on this as kind of a feature of the spell. Just count it as like an added bonus in case it ever comes up. So that does it for the spells I wanted to talk about today. I'm going to list off all the utility spells and not recommended spells from the cleric spell list. Control water, divination, locate creature, stone shape, commune, geish, hallow, legend lore, scrying, and find the path. Most of these are decent spells for clerics. They're utility spells, which means they're useless for a sorcerer. All right, some of you are going to write in the comments, it's not useless. Yes, they're not useless, but for a sorcerer, it's a real big waste to take spells like this because a lot of these spells are very, very situational, and you cannot afford situational spells as a sorcerer. You're going to be clamoring, especially with such a massive spell list of sorcerer and cleric that you have available to you. You're going to be clamoring and you're going to be like, oh, I really wish I could take this spell and this spell. So why would you take a spell like Control Water, you know, that you're going to use once every five or six sessions, if even that, where you're trying to find ways to learn other spells from lower levels that you really wanted to take and you're not able to because you don't have enough known spells. So avoid those spells and... Um, Instead, take some of the ones that we talked about earlier or take Sorcerer Spells. You can watch the Sorcerer Spells video for 4th, 5th, and 6th level spells that I have. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the comments down below. Now, let's talk about the standouts for mid-level spells from the Cleric Spell List for a Sorcerer, a Divine Soul Sorcerer. At level 4, I think the standouts are definitely going to be Death Ward and Freedom of Movement. These are spells that are going to defend your party tremendously and... Death Ward can be used before going into a dungeon or an adventure and save you sorcery points and save you spell slots and still get a major benefit. Have your entire party uh, protected from dying without having to really use any resources. That's fantastic. And then Freedom of Movement, which is going to allow your party members to continue fighting despite debilitating effects like paralysis or difficult terrain. For level 5, I think the standouts are Contagion, that's an awesome spell that, again, just completely annihilates your target. Uh, Dawn, which is a fantastic damage over time spell and deals a great damage type as well. Dispel Evil and Good, mostly because of its versatility. A lot of the effects are good to mediocre, but because you can have so many different things that you can do with this spell, the versatility alone for a sorcerer is awesome. Greater Restoration, as you get to the higher levels, this is a spell you'll be casting every adventure pretty much, just to keep your party moving and keep your party in top shape for the combats that are going to come. Insect Plague, because again, good damage over time, and it has that control element, so you can not only just control creatures, but you're also dealing damage while you are controlling them. And finally, for fifth level, Summon Celestial, a great summoning spell that's going to allow you to have another ally that deals decent damage and can do a whole bunch of other stuff for you. Definitely, if I were to pick from any of these, I think the main one that I would choose, if I had to choose only one, it would be Summon Celestial. The standouts for level six are going to be Create Undead. Again, summoning spells are something that you don't get very often as a sorcerer, so take full advantage of the good ones. Create Undead is an awesome spell that gives you three summons, basically. They're kind of weak, they don't take a whole lot of damage, but they are useful in so many situations that there is no reason to not take this one. Harm. Harm deals a tremendous amount of damage, and I think that uh, this is a spell that you're definitely going to want to use if you want to be relevant in combat as far as helping the other party members deal some damage to enemies. Heal. Heal is a fantastic spell, especially with Twin Spell. You're going to be able to do quite a bit of healing in one action to a couple of party members, and that can turn the tide in a combat. And Hero's Feast. Uh, just like Death Ward, this is one, and you don't even have to use Extended Spell on this one because it already lasts 24 hours. This is one that can change the outcome of an entire adventuring day because the benefits are just so significant that 
you can't go wrong picking a spell like this. And you will cast it every day. As long as you can afford the gold piece cost, you'll be casting it every day. And that does it for the mid-level Divine Soul Sorcerer spells. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with some of my analysis here. Uh, I'd be happy to hear and, and uh, rethink my recommendations if you give me some good reasons to. And I love hearing from you guys. And I love discussing these things. I mean, there's been a lot of times where someone has changed my mind f by leaving a comment in the video description. So I definitely appreciate it when you guys take the time to write and post your opinions on these types of things. Plus, I'm sure other people also find it very useful when you give some helpful recommendations to them. I know there are some of you in other videos of mine where someone will ask a question and one of you will come in and give a major recommendation to them. I, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people really appreciate that. So thank you guys for staying active on the chat. And thank you guys for all the support as always. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down there in the description down below. As always, I'm your innkeeper from the Twisted Tentacle Inn. Check in anytime. I'll talk with you then.